and the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. These particular fallen angels were bound and kept for this very hour, for this very day, this very month, and for this very year. The Bible doesn't say why these four were bound or who they were, but it had to have been something horrifically evil. Did they defy God by mingling with the daughters of men, or was it something else? Was it something even worse? We just don't know. Of the fallen angels, Lucifer is the only one mentioned by name in the Bible. Prior to the four angels being loosed, all of the seven seals have been opened, and five of the seven trumpets have sounded. Anyone alive at this particular point in history has seen some extremely horrific things. They've experienced an earthquake, unlike anything ever experienced. They've witnessed the sun turning black, the moon turning blood red, the sky disappearing like a scroll, and mountains and islands disappearing. They've witnessed unimaginable death, famine, and suffering. But soon, they're going to see an army so terrifying that even their worst nightmares can compare. Now let's talk a little bit about the Haditha Dam. Haditha is a city in western Iraq, and it's about 150 miles northwest of Baghdad. The Haditha Dam is north of Haditha, and it's around 6 miles long and about 200 feet high, making it one of the largest dams in the world. It provides electricity to hundreds of thousands of homes, and some as far as 150 miles away. It also regulates the flow of the Euphrates, and it provides water for irrigation. Now, during the 2003 invasion of Iraq, U.S. Army Rangers stormed the dam so that it wouldn't be destroyed by Saddam Hussein and his men. Its destruction would have been a negative effect on the country's electrical grid, and it would have caused major flooding downstream. Now, in 2005, what's called the Haditha Massacre occurred, and it's where a group of Marines killed 24 unarmed Iraqi civilians after a roadside bomb killed a member of their squad. Just four months earlier, ISIS had killed at least 20 Marines with seven car bombs. The Euphrates River is the longest river in the Middle East, and it's currently 1,700 miles long. It starts in eastern Turkey, and it flows through Syria and into Mesopotamia, which is now Iraq, and it flows into the Persian Gulf. The Euphrates of today has the same name, but it may not be in the same location because of Noah's flood. The flood completely changed the topography of the earth, and as the waters subsided, a new landscape emerged on the earth. And because of this, the original location of the Tigris and Euphrates is uncertain. Some say it's in the same place, some say that it's not. These rivers may just be named after those that were associated with the Garden of Eden. The river was, and still is, an extremely important river, so much so that it's referenced 21 times in the Bible. It's first mentioned as one of the four rivers of the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 2 verse 14, and it's linked with the most important events in ancient history. And this area, where the four fallen angels are said to be bound, is also no stranger to sin. The first murder may have been committed near there, with Cain and Abel, not far from what may have been the Garden of Eden, which is now Iraq. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. The drying of the Euphrates is extremely significant because it dates back to the birth of civilization. Plus, the book of Revelation prophesies it's drying up as a sign of the apocalypse. Both the Tigris and Euphrates rivers are predicted to dry up by 2014, which is 17 years from now, unless some action is taken. In a 2021 article, a father of 12 said he had not seen the rivers so far away from the village in decades. He said the women have to walk four miles just to get a bucket of water for their children to drink. In another article from 2021 says in northern Syria, the Euphrates River water level is so low that 5 million people risk being left without drinking water 
there was a time when the strip of land between the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers in the Middle East was so lush as to earn itself the nickname of Fertile Crescent. Now, however, decertification is advancing, putting whole communities in danger. Even though Revelation 16.12 talks about the Euphrates drying up, there is some context to this. It must take place during the tribulation period. The drying up of the Euphrates during the tribulation isn't because of an increase in temperature or because droughts are getting worse. It also won't be due to an intentional diminishing of water. Scripture tells us that this will be done via a supernatural source. Now, supposedly, the Haditha Dam is so creepy that guards would draw straws because most of them just didn't want to go down there. Soldiers who have had contact with the dam often reported odd feelings and strange sounds, and a lot of them would talk about the fallen angels. And here are a few of their stories, but take them with a grain of salt. This one is from a Marine. Our convoys would stop at the base of the dam and then we had to hike up 13 flights of stairs to reach our birthing areas. I had to carry an MK-19 Mod 3 up these stairs each day after we dropped supplies at our ASP bases. It was completely pitch black and you could hear a woman crying very loudly. I can't remember how many times I ran up these stairs with night vision goggles on, terrified that this woman was going to eat me. I brought many people with me to confirm and everyone knew the ghost of the Haditha Dam before I even took them there. That sound still terrifies me to this day. Here's another story. The Haditha Dam is a very eerie place. The feeling that I got while I was there was a very ominous, mystical experience. My fellow Marines and I had many conversations about how the area around both Haditha and the dam felt very mysterious and very old. While we were there, we oftentimes would go explore the dam. And I can definitely say that the lower you went in the dam, the stronger and more intense the ominous, oppressive, and dark feeling you would get. There also was a time when my friend and I had to spend two weeks there to take a Humvee training course. While we were there, we would go exploring. And on one occasion, I remember we went to the second to the last level and there was a couple marines down there that we had never seen and they were what seemed to us like they were just chilling down there but at the same time it, it seemed like they were guarding the area down below they didn't obviously tell us it was more or less the impression that i got they told us that this level was as low as we could go and that the access to the lowest level was completely sealed off and it wasn't accessible at the time, we didn't think much of it, but I do remember the feeling I had down there was one of great anger. Not of my own anger, but of an overall sense of anger that just seemed to be there. On our deployment, we lost 27 guys in our battalion, and several of them were very good friends of mine, so I always attributed my feelings toward the circumstances and not understanding that there might be more to it. It wasn't until I started researching the fallen angels and reading the book of Enoch and the book of Revelation and the Bible that things started to really make an impact on me. I realized much later that my buddies and I were at an incredibly old place. And my buddy and I were always security for our squad, so we would always be posted up on a roof whenever we were static and we would always be talking about how mysterious and old everything felt there, especially when we were near the Euphrates. This comes from a ranger in a special task force, and it says that I got this report from a ranger in a special task force that went into the lower level of the Haditha Dam. The majority of that task was U.S. Marines, but the overall composition is a wide variety of American, British, and Australian operators. This is the area that four fallen angels are chained until the last days. The tunnel at the base of the dam opened up into a cave. A feeling of dread gripped every member of the team, though they were quite battle-hardened. They rounded a corner and saw what they thought was a wall, but it moved. In the vast chamber, they saw a chained being about 50 feet tall with large wings and glowing blue eyes. A Mossad operator was with them who understood ancient Hebrew. The being said, it is not yet my time to be released. Two Marines at the front started shooting at each other. The surviving Marine put his M4 in his mouth and ended himself. And total chaos ensued. 
and other Marines started shooting at each other while the Marines in the rear drug back as many as they could out of the chamber. And apparently when this thing is released, violence on an unprecedented scale will break out on the earth. This ranger was quite brave to come forth. He felt we had the right to know what is really out there. When it comes to the location, do you think that maybe the fallen angels are in a location that's being taken too literal and that it's not on a level that we can actually reach? And being that the Great Flood completely changed the topography of the earth, wouldn't the original location or the course of the Tigris and Euphrates have changed? Some people say yes and some people say no. So what do you think?